Today's lesson is a pretty exciting lesson. Today will be our first attempt to try and identify not only the topic of our inquiry, but to move closer to identifying a research question or a project goal. Uh, ultimately, our objective today is to have an idea of a topic, uh, a little bit of an understanding of the people who can help us investigate that topic, uh, some ideas of what resources might be available and what work has already been done related to that topic, and then a few workable drafts of research questions that we can then build on. There's no expectation that we will have a finished research question at the end of this activity, but we should be moving closer to that research question or project goal. All right. Each of you on your papers should have a handout that offers uh, a visual, it looks just like this. Uh, it has instructions here in the top left corner to give you an idea of what you're going to do as you create a poster. Uh, your poster will be done on chart paper, uh, which we have here in the classroom, and you're gonna use markers. Uh, you're gonna need to set up your poster in four quadrants with one centerpiece. Here I've done it as a rectangle. You can do it as a circle, a triangle, a square, whatever shape uh, suits your eyes. But here in the center, we're going to set up the topic and then we're going to have four quadrants outside of it. One for types of experts, one for search terms, one for resources at school, and one for possible research questions. Now these are not all of the ideas that we need to be aware of as we narrow down our research question, but these are some good starting points for helping us narrow down our inquiry. Uh, you'll notice that I used a different color for the font of each of the four quadrants in order to help you visualize what's happening today and keep separate the concepts. I'm going to recommend that you use different color markers. You do not need to use the same colors I did, but you should use four separate colors for each of the quadrants. And that way, when you have a lot of responses, visually, you'll be able to differentiate the, the responses. Uh, before we get started today, we need to go over some key terms to make sure that we understand the language of research and make sure that we're all working from a common base. So I'll start with discipline. And if you think back to uh, our very first lesson this year, the discipline refers to the field of study where our inquiry is situated. Uh, the examples we used were history, science, arts, the humanities, et cetera. And then you can break it down a little bit more and look at world history versus US history or environmental science versus biology. But the discipline refers to where our topic or our inquiry would be situated. An expert, now an expert could mean a lot of things, but in terms of this activity and moving forward, an expert, could be a specialist in the field. It could be a teacher of the subject. It could be a retired professional. Uh, essentially for our thought process today, we wanna to refer to anyone who has more knowledge of this subject than the average human. Now it could be people who work here at the school. It could be the authors of books that you have read. For example, in world history, it could be Mr. Arzadi or it could be Jared Diamond, the author of Guns, Germs, and Steel. Or it could be someone you know in your family who is a professor or who studies world history or maybe uh, works at a museum. So the, the world of experts can be very wide and varied. Search terms. Uh, much like what we learned in seminar last year, we want to be specific with our search terms. We want to use only words related to the topic. Going back to the idea of world history, I wouldn't want to say the entire history of the world as it, as you see, there were so many extra words in there. I would look at world history and then try to pick a specific time period. So world history, 1500 to 1750. Uh, try to be specific, don't add fillers. Try to brainstorm as many terms as you possibly can. Now, if you have trouble, ask your table partners or your instructor and see if maybe we can't all together come up with a better list of search terms. You can just list the words in this uh, quadrant and they can be randomized. 
You can group them together by um, related issues. It's however you want to organize it in this quadrant. Now, once you have a complete list, you're going to want to then use the source.com or another online tool to find synonyms for those search terms, and that will greatly expand the list of search terms. This will become a lot more helpful as we move towards the annotated bibliography assignment. And resources. In this quadrant, which is in the bottom part of the poster, you want to think through what are the resources that are available to us here at our school? Um, if you're doing science, uh, do we have the proper lab equipment? Uh, do we have the books that may need to be available? Do we have access to the databases that you would want to have access to? Uh, if you're going to run an experiment uh, where you have kids testing the use of a particular technology, do we have that technology? Do we have a space where you could run the experiment? What resources would you need? If you were running uh, an inquiry into uh, the warm-up habits of soccer players, do we have a soccer field? Do we have a certified trainer who can assist you with that? Would you need a coach? So resources is just anyone that you, anyone or anything on this campus that you believe may be helpful to your inquiry. Once again, here's the four quadrants and I wanna go through what is the proper order for completing the poster. We're gonna start by identifying the topic. Now you have, may have more than one topic, but as long as the topics are connected in a logical manner, you can list those. For example, if I was interested uh, in comic book movies, let's say that was my topic, comic book movies. I could also find uh, related topics in terms of comic books uh, or movies in general. So those would be logically connected, but I wouldn't want to put comic book movies and then also look at athletic performance of high school students. Those are two separate topics and they would require separate topic inquiry posters. Uh, if you do have separate and unrelated interests and you are willing to put in the work to do two posters, that is a possibility and maybe that'll help you narrow down to one particular topic you wanna to focus on. But for the purposes of this assignment, we wanna have one topic or related topic. So we do that first. Our next step is to list search terms related to the topic identified. So this is really just basic word association. I mentioned comic book movies, so now we want to write comics, movies, literature, box office, receipts, uh, stars, fans, fandom, comic con. See, as you can see, if we just get started listing some words, other associated words come up, and then the next thing you know, we have a list of search terms. As we discussed earlier, once we have a list of search terms, that might get us thinking about our types of experts and thinking through who might be related. Well, I want to do comic book movies. Well, uh, I might want to talk to a film director. I might want to talk to a writer. I might want to talk to a film historian. I might want to talk to an economist. I might want to talk to a journalist. These are all experts that I may want to talk to. I might want to talk to the art history teacher because uh, he has had some expertise with uh, film and art in film. So maybe he's an expert that can start the process. Maybe I want to talk to the film studies professor uh, at Cal State Long Beach. All of these would be uh, added to my list of experts. After creating a list of experts in the field, now I want to start thinking about what resources I may or may not need. Having already started to think about experts here on my campus, then I might want to start thinking, oh, do we have a film analysis class? Uh, are there resources in there that I may want to use? Is there a teacher of that class that I may want to get help from? So this comes after we've created our list of experts. Finally, once I've had the thoughts of the topic, the search terms, the type of experts, and the resources at school, I want to just start writing possible research questions. Now the key to remember here is I don't want to judge the questions yet. I'm not locked into any of these and one of these that initially looks like a bad question might end up being the genesis 
of a really good research question or project goal. So much like what we did with the question formulation technique in AP seminar, I want to just start listing as many questions as I can think of based on the thoughts that I have after having done word association with the search terms, after brainstorming the types of experts, after thinking through the resources at school. I'm now, I've been focusing on this topic for well over an hour now. There's curiosities that are coming up and I just want to list as many possible questions at all. Please, please, please do not judge the questions. Don't say it's good or it's bad. Just try to write as many possible questions as you can. Some key reminders, use different color markers for each of the quadrants that will help you out visually as you are using this poster as a tool. We're not just creating this so we can get a grade. This will be a tool we will use as we move forward in the development of our research question or project goal. All right, try not to prejudge. Let your imagination go wild. Don't guess whether or not something's a good response. Put the response down. And if you find yourself getting stuck, discuss your choices with your table partners. Socialize with them. Talk to them about their topics. Let them talk to you about your topic and then the sharing of those ideas. Your table partner, although they might be on a totally different topic, might say something that could spark a new idea in terms of resources that are available or a type of expert. So please discuss your choices with your table partners. So remember, don't prejudge and discuss your choices and you will end up with better work. Uh, if you have any questions about the proper format, you can simply replay this video to go back through and look at the structure. But remember, it goes topic, search terms, types of experts, resources, and then possible research questions.